What is up everybody? It is Zach and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual, so bear with me, but I've got a very special guest along for this journey through time and space. Can you introduce yourself, my dear guest? Ahoy, I am Triss. Uh, you probably know me from Game Explain, but this is not at all gaming related, so we're having a Interesting discussion here, Zach. Yeah, we, you know, with both of us being mostly known for gaming-related content, it's honestly, I, I think it's quite fun to get to delve into something a little <laughs> different, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, for those of you who do not know, I mean, I don't know how you don't know, because I'm assuming you're a fan of Doctor Who if you're watching this, there's been a lot of Doctor Who news recently. A whole lot. So, let's just get started quickly before we even get into the news some people might be like well when did you guys start watching like how long you've been into the series so tris you start us off when did you get into doctor who and how so i got into doctor who around i want to say i was around like 10 or 11 uh i was i i, I was actually like sick at the time i was like home from school and i was like like on the couch i couldn't do much and there happened to be like this marathon on sci-fi I think it was actually earlier than for, than like 10 or 11, but there was a marathon on sci-fi running through, of course, episodes out of order randomly. But it was it was jumping between series two, three, and four. And this was before the finale to season four happened. So I, obviously I, I was loving everything going on, but I was like half thinking it was some fever dream because the characters kept swapping out between episodes. So I was really confused because I didn't, I couldn't, comprehend the fact that they weren't just showing them in order because, you know, that would be the sensible thing to do. Why would a television network do that? Um, so I got introduced to the show uh, through David Tennant. In, in no order, but David Tennant. But my first time, like, watching a full season of it, like, as it was coming out, was with Matt Smith. Because everything I saw with David Tennant was, like, as they were, like, after they had already come out, catching up, essentially, in time for end of time so that's so interesting because <laughs> for me it's kind of similar well not not really um well actually no it gets kind of similar my first episode of doctor who was again i was well, actually i was younger than 10 i've been like maybe eight because a lot mm -hmm. of my family is from the uk so you know right. doctor who's you know obviously from there and I still remember when I watched my first episode of Doctor Who, because I was addicted to it. It was Series 2, Episode 3, School Reunion. And it's a great Ooh. episode, you know, of course. Um, but I loved it. And, you know, back at that time in America, they didn't show Doctor Who that much. So yeah. I, I watched a bit of Series 2 and 3, because uh, by this time 4 wasn't quite done yet. And mm -hmm. I, I still remember the first, of course, the first time I ever got to watch an episode live was The Waters of Mars. And I was like, yes, I was yes. like 10 years old. And Same. I was like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> this is so scary. The terrifying episode, but such a good one from uh, if you wanted specific episodes that I saw, the first two that I saw from that marathon are actually the two that I use now to introduce people to the series. Just to see, test the waters they're interested. It's. Uh, Blink and Midnight. Oh, oh. Both of those. <laughs> so solid. Both like staples of their series. I mean, Midnight, oh, Midnight's, mm -hmm. oh, it's so hard with <laughs> Series 4. Series 4 has so many great episodes. It really does. Um, but yeah, I mean, I know the answer for this, but even though you grew up with Tennant and Smith, who's your favorite Doctor? So, it... it it's definitely always been kind of hard for me to pin that down because each style that has so many highlights, so many things that make them special. And it's something I thought long and hard about over the last few years, but I think specifically favorite Doctor, mine probably has to be Peter Capaldi, honestly, the 12th Doctor. As, as controversial as he was when he came in, um, especially some of his later moments in seasons 9 and 10, those are like defining factors to what I always felt the Doctor should be especially post time war and he really conveyed how i always imagined that like he feels like a classic era doctor put in the modern era and it was powerful and i love those and that's that's not to say tenet and smith can't be powerful they also have incredible moments but there's something about the the goofy old man that is like very unapologetically angry sometimes 
that really sold me well on some of Capaldi's best moments. That's awesome. You know, you know what's so funny is with Peter Capaldi is I missed most of his run because by the time mm-hmm. the Day of the Doctor came out, I I, I was lo- I was losing Smith a bit. I'll be honest, like Smith and his very mm-hmm. end started to drag a bit for me, so I, I missed a bit of early Capaldi. But series ten was a banger. Series, like, series 10. ten was amazing. It's so good. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and for people who watch my channel, I mean, I've, I've made videos covering the Doctor Who video game that came out. Is much as kind of a disappointment, but even still, um, so you, most people know this. But David Tennant is my favorite Doctor. It's, I mean, he's you know he's my first mm-hmm. Doctor. He's my main Doctor, and yep. like he, like just so many episodes, I just watch him in awe. Like episodes like Midnight, where you just yes. kind of see him on his own struggling. Like, cause there are episodes like. The waters of Mars when he gets his Time Lord Victorious high, where I'm like, eh, but like midnight, oh, Chef's kiss, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like helpless. It's not. It's the Doctor at like his most curious, but also his most helpless. Exactly. Like there's nothing you can do. <laughs> you know. Um, okay. Well, who's your favorite Doctor Who baddie? Favorite villain the Doctor's ever gone against? Ooh. <laughs> That's also always a really tough question. And I it feels like such a cop-out to say the Weeping Angels. But I've always loved that concept, and they were the first ones I ever saw. I mean, the, my first episode was Blink. So I think they're the most interesting in that I think every time we see them, they manage to make them scarier. And yet I still feel like we have never seen the full potential of what they can do with them. Like Dalek, Cybermen, we, we've seen them, like overdo the potential like we get it these things are like deadly but and and they're great but there's something about the weeping angels that uh every time they appear or just about every time they appear it wows you they do something incredible each time and like unpredictable and uh, the whole scary thing about them is how natural they are too or i guess at abnormal they are because it, it it uses your instincts against you, your need and instinct to blink, literally. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I actually never really thought about that, but I completely agree. Because, like, I mean, think about it. Like, the most recent Weeping Angels episode, Village of the Angels, finally really utilized the whole an image of an angel becomes an angel yep. thing, which it was kind of used in Time of Angels and Flesh and Stone, but not as much as this. Like, it, yeah. it's like, wow, <laughs> finally. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was nice finally getting more of that, and I would also say that was probably the best episode of Flux. <laughs> oh, but by far, that and War of Centaurans, like, those yes. were the good episodes, in my opinion. But, yes. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Uh, yeah, my favorite monster, oh, I know it's, it's, it's so hard, because I also love the Weeping Angels, but my, f- it's... The Vashti and Arata, man. Like, oh my yes. god, Vashti and Arata were so unique and clever and interesting the piranhas of the air stay out of the shadows mm-hmm. like oh just mm, beautiful <laughs> i mean i i always want to see them return but i feel like they're such a good one-off villain you yeah. know so i, don't I know. think i think there was an audio story or two that had a classic doctor dealing with them yeah I think but, it was like which the which fifth. was more so i think it was more so explaining why the doctor knows about them but yeah yeah, it's. I think it's like the fifth Doctor, like the fourth, fifth, or sixth so. around there. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, oh, so good. Okay, <laughs> and now uh, for me, this is the hardest one, but maybe not for you. Your favorite companion? That really is like, the hardest <laughs> question because they're so good. So many of them are so good, and like even like, and not, not to say they're my favorite, but like even like my least favorite companions have their good moments. Like you look at the most recent era with with Jodie Whittaker and her companions. I mean, e- even they have some really incredible moments. Like Graham O'Brien, for example, was fantastic. He he was like the star of season seasons 11 and 12 for me and like how he dealt with grief, honestly. Um, but in terms of like an actual favorite, uh, I, I know the obvious cop out answer is Donna Noble because she's definitely up there for sure. But I think Bill Potts is I mean, she's season 10, love Capaldi. I, I definitely have Bill Potts up there as well. So I'm torn between those two, but it's definitely one of those two. Um, Bill Potts, because around the time then, I mean, I was late high school, early college, somewhere, no, it was 2017, I was in college then. So I was around the same age of what her character was supposed to be. So it felt a lot more 
personable to me as a viewer. Like, yeah, I can see myself in those situations. I can see the situations Bill is getting into and looking around me at other college students. Yeah, they would definitely get into these situations. Like, I was able to relate <laughs> to it a bit more, basically. And it, it also just felt so refreshing to have the role her character played after, like, three seasons of Clara and oh. Amy. Like, it... She gave the same kind of refreshing energy that Donna had. It's it's not a companion that's obsessed and in love with a doctor anymore. And they do go. And that was very nice on that front. Yeah, Bill Bill is definitely up there for me. I uh, she's mm -hmm. absolutely brilliant. Uh, so hard though. I you know, like you, I'm all I'm I'm also not gonna say because Donna Noble again is the obvious cop out. <laughs> not gonna do it. Um <laughs> But, you know, it's funny, the companion I'm going to choose, everyone used to say she was so overrated, but now I think she, like, was, she's now underrated. And that's honestly Rose. Mm -hmm. I Particularly yeah. in season, in series one. Rose in series mm -hmm. one, like, you know, she was really, she, you really felt that sense of she was discovering, you know, what the world was like, and even discovering the Doctor. In, in Dalek, for instance, when she's yes. like, you know, what are, you know, if, if you think these are monsters, what are you, or whatever she said, like, like so brilliant like she i mean even though you know yes there's like not uh, at the time the companion having the romantic issues with the doctor at least with tenant was very wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff <laughs> kind of new um but, having it like once in a while isn't a problem it's when it starts to come up more and more like it, it, it killed martha's run because too much of martha's run was spent on that so yeah, because Mar Martha is honestly like her departure was a brilliant, amazing. She herself, yeah, I love how it delves into her family life. You got to know Martha, but exactly, but Rose, man. I mean, I you see the thing is, as I always, I mean, this is my bias coming in. I think <laughs> Russell T Davies made the best companions. Like I like Amy and Rory, I like Clara, but I feel like I didn't know enough about them. Russell T Davies writes really good lives. And I don't, and I, like, he makes the characters feel alive because every one of RTD's companions, you saw what their friendships were like, their home life. And the only real sense of that we get otherwise is, I mean, you have Amy and Rory who, the doctor is their family. The, them and River together, that's a family. You have Clara, who I think we saw her family like once ever. Yeah, yeah where the doctor <laughs> the stood Christmas naked special. in front of them like, you're seeing exactly. everything! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then, I mean, you got close to it with uh, Chris Chibnall with uh, Yaz's family, and then this entire past season where they could have done more with it, they didn't. So, it kind of you had your chance to bring back a family unit and an element to it all, and then you didn't. And I and Ryan and Graham is another case of the the fa whole family's in, already involved from the start. So, yeah, I'm we haven't seen it since the RTD era, and I'm I'm hopeful since we're getting him back, but. Well, we're going to get into what we're already seeing with the David Tennant special. We're going to get into that. But yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm also immensely disappointed in, in, in Chris Chibnall. I mean, I think I think the problem with Chris Chibnall, and I won't spend too long on this, is that it just lacked so much focus. Like, you know, you saw Yaz's family for like an episode and then like not forgotten again. Yaz is a police officer. All right. You mentioned that. Never see it again. Like it's, it's I don't know, very spotty. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I think a big issue of it and again not not to dwell on it like you said i, I think I, I really do think a big issue of it is it feels more like they're ticking boxes for appearances and i don't mean what people think they mean with casting that's not what i mean i mean there's whole scenes where it feels very formulaic did graham say something check did ryan say something check yes check and it's like oh huh what do you mean and then oh, all three of them said something we're good time for the doctor to monologue again and th that's what I mean when I say checking boxes there, where it felt like they didn't really know how to juggle so many characters. So rather than, you know, giving some of them more of a focus one episode, some more backseat, which they did sometimes, more of their time was spent. Here's the doctor. Let's make sure these three have at least a certain number of lines in this episode. And it didn't really work that well. Yeah, I remember there was an episode in series 12. It might have been... Praxius, I think? No. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe. I don't remember. It was like where they were traveling to some... I think it was Praxis because they were traveling to like China or something. 
And yep. they were like, oh, we're still traveling. It, it, it felt like they were taking a long time to get from place to place, where in like every other episode, it's like, are we going to go somewhere? Boom, we're there. Like, I don't know, just to get people to talk and <laughs> kind of weird. Yeah, there, there were awkward moments where the TARDIS was taking long periods of time just so the Doctor had time to talk to them in the middle of a crisis. Yeah. Just very off, but okay. Mm -hmm. A little forced. Let's go on to... Well, we have lots of news to talk about. So the first one is yep. honestly probably going to be the quickest because we know nearly nothing really about this. Is I hope it's Shooty Gotwell, right? Shooty Got Gotwell? Yes. It is, yep. has been cast as... The fourteenth Doctor question mark. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the question mark there in case they did wibbly wobbly time your mind with the next point. Yes, the next Doctor, the next main Doctor. Um, the next Doctor, the series fourteen starring Doctor. Exactly. Have you seen Sex Education at all? I have personally. I have. I have. So I've seen uh, Shooty Got was like main starring role, and I've seen the the kind of performance he can bring. Granted, I've also seen the edits people have been making lately, and those are also really funny. <laughs> I've seen <laughs> those. He's just like sassing the Daleks and things like that. But um, it, he carries a lot of weight really well. I mean, um, as, as an actor, the the role he's given in that he covers a, re a lot of really heavy topics while also having to wear that that uh, cheery, quirky, fun attitude all the time. He's you know. Uh, he's not just the gay best friend character in that show. He also has all of his own development and focus and stories that I actually completely understand being able to translate that into the doctor. And that's and that's just playing the role of a high school kid. I can only imagine putting him in the more serious situation of now you're the doctor. Just how well that'll translate because now he doesn't, he doesn't have to do it as an awkward kid anymore. Now he can do it as... Something a lot more, uh, I guess the best way to phrase it is dramatic. Yeah, and you know what's crazy that, I'm, that I honestly love is uh, it, there's no secret that during Chris Chibble's run with Jodie Whittaker, there was a lot of outspoken, bigoted, sexist, you know, yeah. you know what I mean. Like a lot of that, I personally, I mean, I, I haven't looked like so deep, but I haven't seen much of that. And I'm happy. It seems like, you know, like, He's being well received, uh, from what I've seen at least. Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak to everyone, and I, I'm I, a lot of people saying they don't know who he is. There are a lot of people who say they do. A lot of people say they don't. And you know what? Most doctors, you don't know who they are at first. I had no yeah, clue exactly. who Matt Smith was at first. No clue. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's like as young as Matt Smith was when he started too. Like yeah, nobody knew Matt Smith at first, and like that's okay. You know, I, I, I've seen people being like, oh, they should have picked like this big Hollywood star to be the doctor. I'm like, no, they've never really done that, except for John Hurt, I guess, as like the, the war doctor. But like as the main starring iteration of the doctor, you never get that. And I actually think them bringing in the less known actors, th th that becomes like their big break. And that's really exciting because you get to see someone that you don't really know what their strengths are but <laughs> their higher ups do and then you get to see it unfold like for the first time and you get to see what makes them a star yeah and i i love just seeing how passionate judy is for the role and like you see the videos that he's posted on instagram and like did you, did you see the exchange between him and, and sylvester mccoy yes yes so that wholesome. was really great more scots more scots <laughs> yeah exactly and, the, and uh, sylvester mccoy with the ceiling fan going above his head so <laughs> wholesome so cute i loved it <laughs> it's it's really nice to see that he's been welcomed into the doctor who family so well and you're right i haven't seen anywhere near as much of a a, a fan problem than uh, compared to what jody whitaker had and i think in part, it's because we just got it announced. We didn't have what happened with Jodie Whittaker, where they built it up for 13 days of, you know, guess who the next author is going to be. And they were like marketing it, encouraging people to guess who it's going to be. And you're, here's your big reveal. You're going to get it. And I don't think back then it was I mean, obviously, th there was the problematic people that couldn't accept the woman doctor and screw them, honestly, like. Jodie has had fantastic moments. She's brilliant. I love Jodie. The writing her, sucked, her, in my opinion. Jodie's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Jodie's brilliant. Writing and uh, acting, great. But um, I think a lot of the initial disappointment for Jodie was actually from the way it was marketed. They spent like 13 days building it up. And here's your reveal. The hood is down. 
and then people get to react. Whereas, I mean, Peter Capaldi was announced on like some like night like talk show, I think, or some sort of event. Uh, here, Trudy was announced at I think I think it was the Baftas. Like it, it, it's it's a lot more sudden, and there's 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 no build up, and I think. That just works better for this kind of thing. Yeah. So maybe people, I, I did hear people that were disappointed in the no build up, but I'm like, with how social media is nowadays, I feel like it's more beneficial to just suddenly drop something and then everyone's talking about it at that particular moment because they think it's trending and yep. it gets around. So. Yep. Exactly. Oh, all right. Let's get into some of the beefier <laughs> news. Some of the beefy yep. stuff. So we heard about Shooty. Uh, not last weekend, but two weekends ago. And mm-hmm. a couple days ago on Sunday, we heard... A whole week later. An exact week later. An exact week later. <laughs> we get the bombshell that no one... Well, I feel like people were somewhat expecting it, at least with David. Not as much with Catherine. But mm-hmm. David Tennant and Catherine Tate are coming back for some sort of special for the 60th anniversary. I need your initial thoughts on this. <laughs> I, I, I saw that, and I was, like, incredibly shots like this wasn't it wasn't exactly like like to the minute these at times i remember i woke up to the news of shooty a, a week earlier and i was very very excited the moment i woke up but in this case i saw the the tweet go out with the two hearts the plus like the the diamond and everyone starts theorizing and rtd goes oh they're back and everyone's like who's back what's back they, they get the emojis trending on Twitter during that time. Like, they they broke things down. Nobody knew what was going on. People were theorizing it was like, oh, maybe, maybe they're back means Christmas specials are back and we're getting a Christmas special this year, right? No, it's the bombshell news of David Tennant is back as the Doctor and Catherine Tate is back as Donna Noble. And it's been a wild ride since then because the, the internet absolutely broke down. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> Yeah, and I you know, at first, I mean, now it's a little more clear because of the leaked shooting footage, which we're going to get into in a bit. But mm-hmm. before we had the footage of the set and the shoot, people were like, what the hell is happening? Like, how does this work? And I still don't understand quite how it's going to work because of the story implications. And it's just like, God, mind blowing. I can't even think of the words. <laughs> Yeah, at, at first, my thought was kind of like the 50th anniversary special where you had um, you had the 11th Doctor and Clara run into David Tennant's Doctor post Waters of Mars, but pre-end of time. I figured it was going to be something like that. It would be 10th Doctor and Donna during season four. I'm like, oh, cool. They're going to bring them in. So maybe we'll see a different Doctor and their companion get dragged in through all this because that's how this sort of stuff usually works. But uh... <laughs> no, not, not in the slightest. Um, so... Let's just jump right into the leaks. Uh, there are a bunch spoilers, of spoilers, I, I guess. Yeah, spoiler alert for people who <laughs> don't want to be spoiled, but it's it's everywhere. I don't know how you're missing it. Um, so, I mean, I think one of the first things, or one of the first things people figured out. Let's try to go in chronological well, order. Oh. Wait, but but but, but before be- before we get into the leaks, because technically before filming started, as of recording this yesterday, they did make another announcement a day after. Uh, oh, the yeah. day after David Tennant and Catherine Tate. And that does play into the leaks, yeah, so let's talk about that. That does very... play into the leaks, so yeah, let's yeah. start with that. So let's start with that. I don't think there's too much to say initially until we get into the leaks, because then the pieces start to connect. Yeah. But that is yep. Yasmin Finney, hopefully I'm pronouncing her name right, yes. as being cast... Oh, I hated Russell T. Davies' message in this. It's being cast <laughs> as another Rose. <laughs> Russell, my man, <laughs> you're killing me. Now he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> he knows. He knows. It's just, oh. Well, I want to say first off is this, this is going to the people who are just, I'm going to be honest, dickheads about this. People are like, oh, they have an agenda. They're recasting Rose Tyler. No, they're not. Shut the fuck up. Go sit down. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. Go away. Now that that's over. There. Now that that's over. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, they never said Rose Tyler. They only said Rose. And that was very telling. And then RTD doing his whole, like, ooh, who could it be? How could there be another Rose? You have to tune in to the 60th anniversary celebration to find out. And that's what all this has been for. They announced Shooty as the, the, the doctor for Series 14 and onwards. And 
David Tennant, Catherine Tate, and now Yasmin Finney all being cast for the 60th anniversary celebration, whatever form that ends up taking. Yeah, and, you know, of course, many people were trying to speculate, like, what is this? I heard even heard people saying that this David Tennant was the Metacrisis Doctor, and then, like, <laughs> man, I, I, I've seen so many wild theories, but it seems like it's being confirmed, or it's being confirmed from the shooting links. So, uh, Tris, do you want, is there anything you want to say first about the leaks? Because <laughs> I know you're way more, way more savvy on it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been looking into the leaks for a bit, and I actually saw that Reddit post before the announcement of David Tennant and Catherine Tate came back. So there's this like Reddit leak going around. I was like, oh, hey, I know details about the anniversary. Uh, that's going to happen. It's going to be three specials. David Tennant's going to come back as the Doctor, but post Jodie Whittaker, and he's reusing a face and doesn't know why. And he runs into Donna and all of Donna's family, and she gets her memory back. And Donna has a daughter named Rose. And and that's like the... I think they said like uh, Rachel Talele would be directing the first of the three episodes that it would be... And there's other classic appearances, but they won't say what. And obviously, at first glance, before last weekend, that that's just too good to be true. That's, you know, that that's someone's pipe dream right there. But then we started getting these announcements in. <laughs> one by one. You know, one, one by one, drip fed to us, trickling down. You got David Tennant and Catherine Tate coming back, reprising their roles. You have... Yasmin Finney being cast as Rose, which is kind of telling. And now, not not to uh, steal the thunder on the, the the set leaks, which I'll let you get into in a moment, but we we know they're using the Thirteenth Doctor's TARDIS, and we've seen Donna's family. It's starting to feel a little hard to deny that. Like, oh, it can only be a lucky guess for so long before uh they might actually have info yeah and you know it's crazy like at least for us i feel like it's so, it's so weird because since we cover nintendo on you know for you gaming explain for me my channel like we're mm -hmm. so used to seeing leaks and all that yeah. and we're like oh it'll be months until we know if this is true or not and we won't even know if this person just had a really good guess this is like oh <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> very obviously oh okay <laughs> they know what they're talking about <laughs> and, yeah yeah, so, uh, like, literally, like, a day after the announcement, which actually would have been yesterday for, from when we are filming this, uh, mm -hmm. set images and videos started to leak. Um, and the first thing many people started to notice was, well, firstly, as Tris mentioned, the 13th Doctor's TARDIS, <laughs> which was the big telltale, okay, this isn't normal. Uh, but then also... David Tennant's doctor was wearing a very different outfit. It almost kind of was like a mixture of like David Tennant's usual clothing style, but like Peter Pic Peter Capaldi colors, like the darker colors. Mm -hmm. And it's it's like a blue version of his brown coat, and then much more um like the the, the suit has a much more like plaid kind of style to it. Yeah. So it's like inspired by his original look, but it's a new take on it. Yeah, and you know that led like people to speculate so much, and then. We got the confirmation of Bernard Cribbins, a.k.a. Wilf, the most adorable old man in all of Doctor Who, coming back, which I nearly cried when I saw Bernard yeah. Cribbins. I love him. He's I'm I'm so surprised that Wilf is back. And I he, he's like 93 now. Like, I genuinely didn't think... Like, when they announced them coming back, him coming back, and we started seeing, oh, hey, this might take place after. I figured we might get, like, a tossing mention, like, you know from like Donna's mother something like, oh, like he mentioned you at his funeral or something. Cause that's what they did with like the Brigadier. Cause I couldn't ever get him back. But no, <laughs> Bernard Cribbins is here. He's in his wheelchair. He's excited like, to be part of it again. And I'm like, this this man has the, the longest legacy with Doctor Who now. Like he really does. <laughs> is Bernard Cribbins like actually in a wheelchair or is it for the scene? It's probably for the scene, but he is old enough that I feel like that also just might be for his own comfort, so he doesn't have to run from explosions. <laughs> like... Yeah, that's fair enough. Because I remember as soon as we saw Bernard Cribbins, like, because you know, mm -hmm. like, this is before we, like, before I really started taking that league seriously, before we even heard about Rose, is I was like, okay, like, there's a little snippet that you saw of 
David, Catherine, and Bernard all running into the TARDIS, but I'm like, but wait, yep. Bernard Cribbins didn't see the TARDIS, the inside of the TARDIS, until the end of time. Hold until on. The end of time. <laughs> yep. Like, so this, this is getting interesting. Yeah, and uh, I think, I don't know if we got this yesterday or today, but we got Sylvia, who is Jacqueline King, I believe is the actress's yes. name. And yeah, and yeah, the, this, all, all this one was today, yeah. Yeah, and then also Sean. I don't know the actor's name who played Sean. I don't remember his name offhand, but yeah, the actor for Donna's husband, Sean Temple, is also on set, so. Yeah, so, like, with the foot, we're, we're gonna get to Yasmin Finney in a second here, but seeing <laughs> all of them on set, I was honestly surprised to see Sean. Um, I, 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 with how Donna's record is with marriages and all that, I thought they were gonna play <laughs> on to that. Like, oh, we got divorced a long time ago, you know, it didn't work out, a giant spider scared him, so I was like, ah, oh, you know, whatever. But, but yeah, it was really nice to, to see. It is nice to see Donna's seemingly been happy with the family, yes. Considering everything that happened with their mother or throughout their whole time, it's nice to see Donna has a happy family now. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I want to draw attention to and maybe speculate a little bit about is, mm-hmm. uh, I believe, I'm believe i pretty certain this is on Russell T. Davies' post uh, about yep. David and Catherine coming back, that, uh, that he described something about them as uh, the battle of a lifetime. So there's something they're doing is the battle mm-hmm. of a lifetime. And... I want some of your speculation a little bit on what the battle of a lifetime could mean. <laughs> so it's it's so weird to deal with descriptions like that in Doctor Who when like we've had the end of the universe in series four, series five, series six. Flux. We had Flux <laughs> in season thirteen. Like we've had a lot of this that I don't. I almost feel like a, the battle of a lifetime can't be as literal as we expect it to be because we get that almost every season. So. It makes me wonder if it ties into what we know about Donna, of if she gets her memories back, her mind will burn and she will die. So I wonder if it's actually a story of saving Donna. That's such a good point, because, yeah, because that's the big question, isn't it? Like, if this is, you know, a post Jody regeneration and Doctor's going to visit Donna and the family afterwards, how did Donna get her memories back? That's the big Mm -hmm. question from this um i i think more than anything what i personally want out of this battle of a lifetime thing is i think with with donna like i I really want to see david and and donna but oh my god i just thought about it my mom's name is is donna and my stepfather's name is david oh my god sorry i just thought of that i'm sorry but i'm thinking david whatever david and Catherine (laughs) having (laughs) That's <laughs> Anyways, I I want to see them fight some fo- like I don't want it to be the Daleks. I want it to it, yeah. If anything, the Cybermen because we didn't see Donna face up against the Cybermen or maybe the Weeping Angels or just something that we haven't seen those two face up against is what I want to see. Like because with the whole uh, timeless children thing, we know the Master is in league with the Cybermen and this could be resolved in the centen- or the yeah the centenary special happening at the end of the year. But mm-hmm. like I don't know, I think it'd be cool to see the Doctor and Donna fight some foes that we that we know of, but we never got to see them fight in their original seasons, or even foes that came after David's run. That like, like for example, the Silence, let's say that we saw in Eleven's yeah. run, going to fight Ten and I don't know. Even though it's not Ten, it still feels satisfying. <laughs> you get what I mean? Yeah, I, I think what I, I think what's fun about the speculation is we have enough to go off of now to know this isn't the Series 4 appearance of both of them. So now we really can play around with the idea of what they didn't get to experience, and, you know, we don't have to deal with the idea of, oh, they'll just wipe their memory, or oh, the timelines are out of sync, they'll just forget it. Like, we could see them deal with things with new knowledge. And that actually makes me think, if we... So, you know, since it's an anniversary celebration, we'll more than likely see other characters and other Doctors and whatnot appear. And I wonder if that's part of why... Donna plays a role here, and I'm only just now thinking this. What if the Doctor just doesn't know what to do, and rather than trying to find himself and honestly just screw up time even more, he goes he goes and unlocks the mind of the only other person that knows as much as him, which is Donna. And knowing that it would be dangerous for her, does it, and also then will try to find a way to save her because that's all he can do, but that's the only person that would know. 
See, I kind of have the same thought as you, except for me, I feel like everything that happens with Donna will be a consequence of the real thing of him going to find Wilf. I think Wilf will be uh, the big person because he knows he can't go to Donna. So he, I think yeah. the original thing is, oh, let me go find Wilf. I'm in this body. Wilf was like the last person. Well, yeah, the last person I saw before yeah. I well, besides Rose and Jackie, whatever. Like, the last <laughs> person I talked to, let me go see Wilf. And then all hell breaks loose, basically. That's what I think. Yep. Yep. And I yeah, have- I can I can see that. Though, I guess... Do we do we want to get further into the leaks and now mention Rose? Or? Yeah, yeah, we get into Rose now because I yeah. have some interesting theories so, on this one. So, with seeing Sylvia Noble and Sean Temple characters on set, the actors for those characters on set, we have also seen the Rose, yeah, Yasmin Finney as this new Rose with all of them, and there's been scenes of them all getting into like a cab together. There's been, see, notably, there was what seems to be a scene of um, Sylvia, Sean, and Rose saying goodbye to the Doctor and Donna getting into the TARDIS. And that's very, very telling. Yeah, because uh, Sean's uh, actor, Sean, said, uh, well, I think he just said Donna, but then mm-hmm. Rose said Mum, which yep. that's like, whoa. <laughs> like, now... I, I I love the fact that she's named Rose because there's 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 two ways this could go about. Obviously, one, it could be residual stuff in Donna's mind and, you know, baby's born, where are we gonna name our daughter? Rose. But I having looked into having looked into it a bit, the casting call that Yasmin Finney was uh cast as was for a trans femme actress. So I wonder if the intent is um, Rose was someone that, or Donna's child that transitioned and chose the name Rose, possibly because of may- maybe this would be proof that like Donna's memories were still there to some degree. Like maybe they came up with stories that she told her daughter, or maybe she had dreams about them and would talk about them, but maybe helped her daughter choose a name. And this further leads me to wonder what if. Donna's just getting her memories back over time and her daughter seeks out and Wilfred and others seek out the doctor for help. Oh, that's... And that's how it all comes together. That, 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 that's where my mind's been going this afternoon. <laughs> imagine, imagine the beginning of this special is uh, just like the beginning of end of time where Wilf gets on the old people bus. He's like, right, this is who we're looking for. <laughs> that was the, that was one of my favorite scenes. I was, I, I do that again. <laughs> Reprise that. Love it. That would be so good. And it would be really funny. He's like, how did you know I had this face again? <laughs> oh, man. I, I, all right, since you actually said a theory, I actually have a theory about Rose. Mm-hmm. I think I find it interesting that they announced Yasmin Finney as a character, but didn't even say that Bernard Cribbins and Jacqueline King were coming back. So mm-hmm. I have some speculation. If, if, this is really a post Jody and I'm um, presumably pre shooty doctor. What if Rose yep. is the next companion? I could see that actually happening, but it's a they're keeping it under wraps for now because they won't, you know, they don't want to spoil that until we actually see see them in action. And then upon actually doing so, they're like, "Yep, here you go. This is actually the new companion or one of the new companions, or maybe she'll just be a recurring character through." multiple because the 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 leak or the rumor is that this will be uh, instead of just one anniversary episode it'll actually be three stories so she might be a recurring character that's in all of them but maybe the rest of Donna's family isn't and they're only in one of them or something yeah because i i just find it interesting that i mean granted it's because it's also because her name is rose in the specials but it's like i find it interesting that this character is being pointed out and being made important, right? Because yep. she has this name Rose. It's important. Like, yeah, I, I feel like they're kind of pushing it for a reason. And, you know, what better name for the first companion of Russell T. Davis in this next era than Rose? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and have the first first episode of, uh, of Series 14 be Rose. <laughs> <laughs> or Rose 2. <laughs> At that point, it's just a reboot. <laughs> exactly. Just like Pilot was you know, for uh, Yeah, there 10. you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh, that's good. Oh, uh, all right. So let's start wrapping this up. So, what are your overall thoughts and excitement for Russell T. Davies' second era as showrunner, and what do you want out of it? Well, I think the last two weeks alone alone have shown a lot of promise, which is fantastic. Uh, so I <laughs> nice one. <laughs> what I, I, I think what I really want to see is just I want to see it feeling like an evolution of the RTD era from like the first four seasons. I don't want it to f I don't want it to feel like we're just immediately running back to that. I want it to feel like an evolution of that. You know, they have higher budget, higher production value, way more things they can do. So do it. Don't just don't just run with what worked before. And I think Shooty as the doctor is proof that we're going to get more than just what worked before. And it should work nicely. And I, I I can't wait for when, you know, your video here comes out and like we'll have like three new set leaks that'll like completely disprove everything we're talking about now because they're filming again later tonight, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, I saw I saw people on Twitter. I, I don't know why. I, I saw people on Twitter saying like, "Oh, Peter Capaldi coming in at midnight." I'm like, "Where did Peter Capaldi come from out of this?" But yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't actually, know about that. Actually, actually, no. Before we go, actually, now I'm thinking about it. I mentioned this. I mentioned this to you literally in messages, but I didn't put it in the thing. Mm -hmm. This is this might be nothing. This could just be Russell T Davies pulling at some strings. But someone did comment on Rusty Davis's post saying, oh, 11, question mark. And then Rusty Davis is giving a little like, and that's been signals of things before. It could be nothing, <laughs> but it could also be everything. <laughs> it could just be noting that he sees the fan interest and he's excited that fans are excited about it. But obviously, we've now seen that RTD likes to uh, sow the seeds of, of, of doubt and excitement and hype. And this is going to be a long wait to this anniversary special. Oh, it's going to be so long. Because I was looking, because I remember I, I saw a picture on Twitter I, I, I tagged you in, and it had the comment, and I went to Instagram to verify this, and there were like 28 other comments along with it, and that was the one that was liked. So I was like, hmm. I'm like, huh. I mean, like That's I said, interesting. could be nothing, but it could be, oh. Yeah. That's, that's really interesting. And I think it's, it, it, it's just... It's fun. It, it, honestly, it, it's fun to have this kind of speculation again for Doctor Who. And it's I, I, I can't say I, I don't want to say I wasn't excited for Jodie's era or anything like that. But this is th this is a time where like I'm genuinely very excited about the future of Doctor Who because I have a very good idea of where it's going and what's going to happen. And that makes it very exciting for me. Like it's the anniversary special. Of course, it can be playing with nostalgia and playing with what we like. And I can't wait to see how it's done. I have a question for you, though, before you uh, answered the same thing you asked me. I know when when we initially spoke about doing this video and doing um, like covering the leaks and such, you had mentioned you you would be worried if this really was post Jody that um, this happening to Donna or Donna getting her memories back and whatnot might ruin the impact of Journey's End to you. Do you still feel like after after all our talks, do you still feel like that would definitively be the case? Or do you think they might play it in a way where, you know what? After 15 years, it it, it, it was worth it. <laughs> you know, if they play their cards right, I don't think I'll be that upset. I mean, <laughs> hey, I'm getting David Tennant and Catherine Tate on, on in Doctor Who again, and Wilf, and Sylvia, yep. and I, I, they're all coming back. I, listen, I I spoke out of nervousness earlier, but now I'm like, no. Go all in. <laughs> you know, bring Rose Tyler. Pull her from the parallel world. Throw her in. Martha. Just get everyone. I want Martha back. Heck, get, I, I want to see what Martha's been up to. Get Jenny, the doctor's daughter. Get her in. They're married. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a complicated lifestyle, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, lo I, I, I love how when... Um, when when Shooty was announced as the Doctor, Georgia Tennant tweeted, "Hello, Dad." Yes. But when they announced David Tennant coming back, she's like, "I won't no, say it." I won't say it. I won't say it. <laughs> yeah, it's just so funny, so funny. <laughs> uh, you know, I haven't seen this much excitement for Doctor Who, honestly, since probably the day of the Doctor. Like, this is the yeah. most I've seen people talking about it, and I'm excited because I felt like you know when I was a kid and. David Tennant was on here in America. People didn't know Doctor Who was. I got bullied for liking Doctor Who in school. 
You know, I got <laughs> I got bullied for it. But then, of course, when Matt Smith came in, everyone in America started watching him because America actually yeah, started Matt, fun. Ma- yeah, because Matt Smith's what made it popular over here. Yeah, and then everyone was like, oh, I like Matt Smith. And I'm like, oh, okay, so I got bullied all this time for liking David Tennant. And no, Matt Smith comes around. Maybe that's why I don't like Matt Smith as much as a doctor. Like, he's my least favorite <laughs> new who doctor. Like, oh, man. <laughs> but, yeah, but with Rusty Days' second era, I'm honestly excited because, like you, I want evolution. But I also do want things back the way they were in terms of the way it was like the way everything was built up. David Tennant's run where, you know, let's say like in Journey's End and Stolen Earth, like everyone came back. It really felt yeah. like like it was proper. There's like world building like you had Bad Wolf in, in, in ser- Series 1 return. Like everything really felt like it came full circle. And I kind of am excited for that. Maybe like how before like yeah, newer companions that would meet the older companions, and there's a lot of fun to, have to be had there. Mm-hmm. I want some of that with a lot of the newer evolutions that have come to Doctor Who in the past few years as well. So, a, a, yeah. the crossing of old and new is what I want, basically. I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping we, we do get that, and even if it's just from other Doctors and companions getting brought in, like Capaldi with Bill, or Eleven with Amy, like something bringing more of them in. Um, whether it's, you know, in post, like maybe, maybe they go to, to New York back in the day and they run into Amy and Rory because they're so trapped there. Like something to bring in additional characters, companions, doctors, I think will make it feel really special. Because the, if there's one thing I want from specifically the 60th anniversary is I don't want it to feel like a celebration of just the modern era. Because that's what day of the doctor was the 50th anniversary as much as i loved that it was a celebration of the of concluding the time war and the ninth and uh, nine ten eleven doctors we didn't have the ninth doctor but it tied into his story as well like it was a nice celebration of the revival of doctor who i want to see something that takes it further and make this be it could be something that celebrates the entire revival of the at, at this point 13 seasons because there's a lot more to work with there but I also want it to celebrate some of the classic stuff. If this centenary special at the end of this year is bringing back Ace and Tegan, I want them to play a role in the anniversaries then as well. And Kate Stewart and like other, you know, legacy characters. Yeah, I honestly really want uh, Joe Grant to come back. Uh, I loved yes. her in Sarah Jane Adventures. Yeah, that one episode. I forget the name of it. Speaking of Sarah Jane, bring in Ronnie. Because she's Ronnie. been getting involved again lately. There's that podcast series they're doing where Ron, Ronnie Chandra is just suddenly like a, a, a player in it again. I'm like, wait a minute. She was part of the video back. game. She was part of the video games too. She was a part was of she? the Weeping Angel uh, mobile game. She was, in, well, her voice wasn't in it, but like her character, yeah. she's like a journalist who investigates all these alien activity. Like she's like part of it now. Yeah. And then, then yeah, definitely bring back Ronnie Chandra then as like, whether it's as a companion or just someone, because she, she can represent everything that Sarah Jane did. Yeah. Or Luke and K-9. Like Luke yeah. Smith and K-9. And K-9, yeah. And yeah. even like, I mean, I know this is more my role, I guess Luke and Ronnie are too, but Martha as well. I feel like, mm-hmm. I, I'm shocked Martha hasn't come back. Her story, I mean, granted she got married with Mickey, whatever, but kind of open-ended. Like, she's off doing mm-hmm. her own thing. Like, she can be brought back, you know? Like, so there, was, there was a lot of random things happening on Earth over the last like ten years that they easily could have brought in Martha for because she definitely would have been involved in some in some ways. Exactly, exactly. But all right, uh, I guess we'll wrap this up now. Any last <laughs> minute comments you want to make about the uh, about well everything we talked about? <laughs> it, it's just exciting to be this well excited about Doctor Who again. <laughs> It's, been, it's. I mean, at least for me, it's been. So, I mean, I, I was honestly excited for Flux, but then it ended up kind of I disappointing was. me. The build up to Flux made it feel like it was actually going to be like it, we, we, we're going back to something big and exciting. Wait, this might really be it. And some particular episodes were highlights, but some particular episodes were also like somehow lower than the lows of eleven and twelve. So, or seasons eleven and twelve. So, I don't know. Yeah, and I get that because I didn't. I, I personally didn't like series eleven at all. I I can't think of one episode I love from series eleven. Personally, I, I liked it takes you away because I think that dealt with Graham's grief really well. But that's the only thing I liked about. 
Yeah, and like series twelve had like Orphan Fifty Five and, and, and Orphan Fifty Five is now iconic as like the Benny episode. Benny, one of the <laughs> Benny, <laughs> like that's such a bad episode. Will and you yet, marry yet, me? Season 12, yes. <laughs> and, yeah, and like, and yet, season twelve has like one of the best masters. It's the weirdest thing. Like, so, like he his his master is so good. It's and like, that doesn't that's not that's not to, to write off John Sims or Missy's, but like what his master bring is completely different in a way that's so refreshing and really, really fun. Yeah, exactly. Like like I could see in is it oh is Sh- 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 I can't pronounce his name. But the current master. Uh, yeah. he <laughs> reminds me of I think it's Sasha. Sasha, yeah, something like that. Sasha. He reminds me of John Sims' Master a lot, but has so many new and unique elements to it that I'm like, I could see it being the same character, but there's some new things thrown in. And bringing mm-hmm. back that mini person thing that like classic Who Masters had. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we get him again at the end of this year, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm wondering if he'll come back for the specials <laughs> or for the. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Be if they get any master, I want him or Missy. Missy. I like I like I like John Sims Master, but it's one of these two more recent ones that I, w- I would want to see crossover with other doctors. I want to see Missy. I want to see Missy against Tenet. I, that's, <laughs> I, that I will pay to see. I mean, you know. <laughs> Just put the anniversary in theaters. There you go. Or then we can pay to see it. Or if anything, do like all the masters even like the Ooh. the war master uh, uh was it jake uh, J- uh jacoby what's his name uh, yeah yeah jacoby. Jacoby. like bring him back like just like like the like masters are god god so much <laughs> oh sorry i'm getting chills just thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> oh all right i think we can end it off here um but thank you everyone so much for watching. If, if, if I'll, I'll be shocked if I actually get it, because you know, my chance is all about video games. So it's like Doctor Who. What the hell is this? But uh, yeah, this is so much fun to do. Uh, special thank you to Tris for joining me for this. Uh, it was super super fun. Um, I'm always down to talk about Doctor Who, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, if there's if there's more news, I, I'll be like Tris, hop back on. We got more to talk about. <laughs> I'm here for it. Absolutely. Oh, so thank you all so much for watching today's video. Like, comment, subscribe, you know, the usual stuff. And until next time, everyone, we'll see you in the next one. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, plug game explain. Plug, plug. Do your plug. I forgot about the plug. <laughs> yes, you can find me over on Twitter at Toontress or more usually making all my content over on Game Explain. Awesome. I nearly <laughs> forgot about the plug stuff. Shoot. I'm all. Either way. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching. See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs>